Well, you can't say that Triple H isn't loyal. It's just that he's more loyal to NXT, it seems. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. I am a die-hard Miami Marlins fan. Have been for 30 seasons now. And believe me, we true fans have been dying hard during most of that time. Still, a group led by the former Yankees great Jared Jeter bought them up and we had a sense of optimism. Yeah, that sense lasted about a month when Jeter and the owners traded Giancarlo Stanton, who had hit 59 homers for the team the season before, to the Yankees, who already had a heavy hitter in Aaron Judge. It seemed to us that Jeter was still loyal to the Yankees rather than the team he just helped buy. Oh, for the record, he sold his share of the team before the start of this season. It almost seems that something similar is happening in the WWE. See, owner Vince McMahon has retired from his post as chairman in order to spend more time with his lawyers. And his son-in-law, Triple H, has been brought back to take over the creative team. He has had a lot of experience with that, having taken NXT from nearly an afterthought on the WWE Network to a brand that was, for a while, on par with Raw and SmackDown. He was booted out, though, when NXT lost a Wednesday Night War against AEW. Well, Triple H has hit the ground running and has shown with ratings instantly up and angles that are more exciting than Vince or John Laurinaitis or anyone else could have come up with. He's even started to add, the roster, add to the rosters to make up for all the releases over the last year and a half. But you see, the Raw and SmackDown rosters aren't being filled with people who were promoted from NXT, but rather from those who were fired from, or fired not too soon after being promoted from, NXT. Obviously, we start with Dakota Kai of the group I lovingly call Kai and Sky, as an homage to that funny Japanese team around the turn of millennium. Dakota, of course, was, an aw was awesome on NXT. He even won the NXT Women's Tag Titles twice with Raquel Gonzalez. And they held said titles for a combined three days. Last April, she was released, having stated she didn't intend on re-signing with NXT. Not too much was heard about her until she reappeared at SummerSlam with Bailey and Io Sky. Apparently, Triple H got in touch with her once he took over, re renegotiated her contract, and got her on Raw. Now, our partner, the wrestler formerly known as Io Shirai, was not released from NXT at all. She'd been out since June with an injury. Not sure if a name change was what she had in mind before being promoted, but there she is. Two SmackDowns ago, the next Purge victims brought back were Karrion Cross and Scarlett. Yeah, remember him? The one that quickly rose to the top on NXT and got kicked up to SmackDown less than a year after his debut there? Yeah, much like Keith Lee and Tegan Knox, they really didn't know what to do with Cross once he hit the big time, so they just let him go last November. Oh, he wasn't starving, though. He had a few matches in MCW and was even part of Ric Flair's last match card. But I guess Hunter hated to see such talent go to waste, so he invited Cross and Scarlet back, and they picked up right where they left off, gunning for the top prize, no matter if he has to go through Roman Reigns or Drew McIntyre to do it. Tick-tock. Sorry. Last Monday was the oddest return, though given the belligerent, it's not too surprising. See, when Kevin Owens was in, interviewed after more or less killing the Ezekiel angle, a car crash was seen, rather deliberately, I might add, in the background. Before AJ Styles went out for his match, some policemen were running through the arena. And then after AJ's win, the police were holding back someone in the crowd. The announce team made very little to do about it, but when... The man raised his head up to a camera that the producers in the truck obviously missed. It showed Dexter Loomis. 
Yeah, the, the blonde, mute, mustachioed psychopath who married Indy Hartwell last September and was released in April to pretty much no fanfare at all. He had some matches in the NWA before Triple H dragged him back. Real question now is, will he be allowed to talk on Raw? And then there was Hit Row last Friday. Much like Cross, the stable became so popular so fast that they were drafted to SmackDown last October. But before they could take off, Creative probably thought, what the hell were we thinking? And released B-Fab on the same day as Cross and the rest of the stable two weeks later. They, like Cross, slummed in MCW for a while. Then their leader, Isaiah Swerve Scott, was recruited by AEW and is currently one of their tag champs, along with, surprise, Keith Lee. Again, Hunter must have pulled some strings and apologized profusely for his father-in-law's lack of vision, allowing for B-Fab, Top Dollar, and Ashante the Adonis to beef up the dwindling tag ranks. Now, since then, I haven't heard of any other Purge wrestlers returning, but I wouldn't be surprised if more did. Hell, if uh, Control Your Narrative doesn't work out, maybe Braun Strowman and EC3 will be welcomed back. But then again, the first rule of Project Mayhem is that you don't ask questions. Let's see what I did there. That... Now, I'm not saying Triple H has forsaken the established WWE superstars for the ones Vince tossed aside. But you really can't help but think that had Hunter been in charge the whole time, none of these wrestlers would have had to be asked to come back. He was put in charge of creative in NXT to ready those of the former Florida Championship Wrestling to become stars on Raw and SmackDown. Now, he may have flipped things around to make NXT nearly equal to the long-standing brands, but he could have given more than his two cents worth to Vince when the superstars were promoted. Instead, he was dismissed for being beaten by an upstart, and whatever creative genius left in the WWE became too stagnant for anyone who left NXT to stay with the company very long. Triple H corrected an error. He went back in time, took the creative Infinity Stones away from Vince, and snapped new life into the WWE. Life that wasn't given a chance to thrive to begin with. You know, I kind of hope Derek Jeter and Vince McMahon get together someday to discuss how they ran their owned franchises into the ground. At least the WWE is back on its feet. The Marlins, uh, we fans are used to it. We are what the Cubs were in the first century. Maybe someday we'll woo Stanton back and maybe have a shot at the playoffs. And maybe Vince will regret all that hush money he spent. <laughs> right. I'm Chris Wall with the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Stay safe. Pray for peace. I'll see ya!